when I get an inquiry, like it's like, oh my god, right? <laughs> it's you're not just picking up something off the shelf, right? I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. Um, I you know I tell my family, oh, I've got this inquiry for this really cool venue, and it gets it becomes everything I am for those few days that that mm -hmm. you know that that inquiry is happening, right? So that person, whoever is you know inquiring about that date, is getting my full heart and soul. That is part of that luxury experience. Welcome to Weddings Over Whiskey. I am photographer John Lyons and I'm here at the Retro Suites Derby Room with Lori McCarthy from Style Co. Hey everybody. Well thank you for joining us for this episode of Weddings Over Whiskey. You're engaged, now what do you do? So this is that time of year, right? This mm -hmm. is between Christmas and Valentine's Day, which was yesterday. Happy Valentine's Day everybody. Everybody seems to be getting engaged. Mm -hmm. So is your phone ringing off the hook? Uh, right now we're really big into planning everything. So uh, lots of phone calls and emails and text messages, tons of questions about what do we do now? Who do we call first? So that's why we have Weddings Over Whiskey to kind of share some information with you. I'd like to uh, thank the bartenders here at the Derby Room, especially Hannah, who will be joining us a little bit later on. It wouldn't be Weddings Over Whiskey without some whiskey. So thank you very much, Hannah. Today we're drinking some Forty Creek, and actually mm. it's uh, it's pretty good. So cheers. It's pretty smooth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is that weird time of year for me, and probably even more so for you, where not only are we planning and trying to execute on the 2024 weddings, but we're fielding inquiries for 2025. That's and, right. and actually, in a few late 2024. Uh, inquires are coming in because it's just a weird engagement season like everything seems to be a little bit later than usual mm -hmm. yeah and I think people are just kind of getting into the the groove again um, they're back in town especially now right now they're, they're coming home for the holidays and they're getting engaged over the holidays but they're trying to plan from far away so we're feeling a lot of those calls about um, what, what's available around the Chatham Kent area and so we'll talk a little bit about that little soon right and we have some questions that uh, people gave in uh, from our little trailer mm -hmm. that we did last week so we'll go through those one by one um, and then we'll we'll bring Hannah from retro retro suites in um, it, in the sort of our next segment to talk about some specific questions for a venue okay sounds, sounds good. good yes okay. yeah good all right so let's go through our list <laughs> the first thing is what how much to budget for a wedding how much does it cost and who pays for a wedding mm -hmm. that's a it's a pretty loaded question there's a lot there but let's back this that up a little bit it's hard to plan a wedding if you don't know how much to budget for a wedding but I would say that's the first step absolutely um, you it's it's okay to have a specific number that you need to work to within when you come to a wedding planner um, for example and you say you know I have X amount of dollars to spend uh, where do we start and um, your budget has to really coincide with how many people you want at your wedding as well right. because the more people you invite um, the more services you need and it really starts to add up now, having said that, if you do some really unique and creative planning, mm -hmm. there are lots of places you can save so you can get that extra 10 people in. But really important that you're serious about the budget so that you don't go over it. Um, weddings don't have to cost a lot. Mm -hmm. There are some really creative ways you can cut back. What's the, uh, in the last year, what is the, um, has anybody been able to pull off a wedding for, say, twenty thousand dollars definitely yes yeah. yeah yeah I mean and a beautiful one too yes right? absolutely um, you yeah. don't so you don't have to spend a, an enormous sum of money like we see I mean we've seen ten thousand dollar weddings twenty thousand dollar weddings mm -hmm. 50 60 most kind of land in that hundred to hundred and fifty yes um, which seems to be the number for the bigger halls and bigger venues that's right yeah uh, and everything in between like we've 
done some half a million dollar weddings yes. and there's no less love at a ten thousand dollar wedding than there is at a hundred thousand dollar wedding yeah it's just Absolutely. all the it's just all the things all the things that you do right mm-hmm and I think, and I know just from planning with our clients, is that um, when you're planning a wedding, where the budget gets out of hand is when you don't actually have it on paper. So right. when you're just, you know, Michael's is having a sale, or I bought this off marketplace, or can we use this? And then you realize later you're $1,000 and just stuff in your basement. Right. And so people really need to remember that, that you need to have your plan first of what you want it to look like, um, so that you're not just buying things because they're they're available. Right. As, as a project manager, we call that scope creep, yeah. right? Where mm-hmm. as as things kind of, well, you're right. Well, it's just another thousand here. But how many times have you heard from a bride or a groom, mm-hmm. I'm going to do this, but keep it off the budget. I don't want my fiance to see it, <laughs> yes. right? Or I don't want my family to see it. I'll just take care of this on my own. I want. I don't want this in the official budget. How many yes. times have you seen that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, many, many, yeah. many times. And, you know, we create budget sheets for clients. And oftentimes they'll say, but don't include the dress, don't include the taxes, don't. It? But no, that is part of yeah, your right. budget, whether who's paying or not. Oh, my mom's covering that. Or you want to have a really good idea of where mm-hmm. you're at because it can spiral really fast. Yes. That's a, that's a good word. It can just get spiral, especially if you have a long engagement, right? You're and you go to a show or you go to a store and you're like, oh, I'll just grab that or I'll just grab that. Mm-hmm. Or you see something on Pinterest or Instagram and you're like, oh, I want that. I like that. Yeah. Stay yeah. true to that budget. Absolutely. I have it's a so friend important. planning a $25,000 wedding and she is m- militant about keeping to that budget. So she's making hard decisions to keep herself under that budget. Yeah. And it's totally doable. Oh, it is. And when you get closer to the wedding, you know, you're a month out or so, there's a lot of things that happen that creep up that you weren't expecting. And so you need to have a little bit left over or kind of in the bank, the savings to cover some of the things you didn't Mm -hmm. expect. Um, So that's one of the biggest tips we give our clients is that don't don't spend it all, you know, before that three month mark because you're going to need it. Right. I always tell, um, now I'm not a wedding planner, I'm just a photographer, but uh, we book early in the process. So we help a lot with some of the early planning before um, before things get too crazy. But I always tell the couples, um, plan your the most expensive things first. Mm-hmm. It's like put the big rocks in the, in, the, in the bottle first, right? Plan your big things, venue, catering, photographer. <laughs> Do those ones first. Wedding planner. <laughs> wedding planner. Well, that kind of goes without saying, <laughs> but I guess I should have said it. Right. Did you know that a wedding planner can actually save you almost three thousand dollars off your wedding? I do know that. Fun fact. <laughs> Fun fact. Fun yes. fact. <laughs> so let's talk about that. Um, let's talk about what a wedding what what a wedding planner can do. Um, well, how do you do that? How do I save the yeah, or, money? Yeah. Well, we usually start with a we start with a want list and we start with a, a needs list, right? So this is the these are the things you absolutely need to have for a wedding. There's a certain template everyone follows. I mean, weddings kind of follow the same format, anyways. Things you have to do, and then there are things that you want to do or things that are, are you wish for. Do you want you know? There's a difference between silver cutlery that comes with the venue, or do you want that gold? Um, cutlery and it's a little bit more so what a planner does is takes your budget and can it can be full planning where we actually help we call it matchmaking in our world so we match make you with mm-hmm. your vent with your industry professionals so people who fit your thank you for not calling them vendors I know, I know you caught yourself <laughs> I'm do. on a mission by the way I'm just gonna tell, tell you right now you don't hire vendors. Yes, they are technically vendors, but these are people, yeah. professionals who, as a photographer, caterer, baker, wedding planner, uh, venue coordinator, whatever. These yeah. are professionals. And in most cases, they're creative people. Mm-hmm. So I love it when somebody says, hire your creative professionals or your wedding partners or your you know, mm-hmm. just, well, we really are your partners in, in your right. day, right? We are, we're totally, we're just as invested in your wedding day as you are. Absolutely. And we're just as exhausted, maybe more so at the end of the night. And because we can't imagine your wedding not being perfect, because right. that's in our nature as being professionals, as we do this for a living 24 mm-hmm. 7. 
So, um, so trust the professionals. I think that is huge on the budget. Mm -hmm. So you get what you pay for is right. is a huge in our world, right? Yep. It's like so if you have a certain vision, as planners, we match you with that person or that company who can bring your vision to life mm -hmm. and eliminate every stressor there is possible. So someone who's um, done it before many times has the same vision as you. And then what we do with that wish in the, in the needs list is we look at your needs and what you absolutely must have. And we have connections with other professionals and sometimes some pretty deep discounts. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we work with our colleagues and so we can get you that gold cutlery right. for the same price as the, mm -hmm. as the silver, silverware. So, I mean, that's a small example, but it's an important one because right. it can really elevate the look of your decor, right? Um, you can, and just even with your packages with some of your professionals, that is why a wedding planner can save you. I think, I don't think, I know, that we we save our clients a minimum of two to three thousand right. dollars off every single wedding right off the top, and that's more than the cost of a planner. Right. Mm -hmm. I get that, and it's not that you're trying to cut corners for them. No. It's just that you're trying to find the efficiencies. That's right. right? And then we'll, if we work with you or any other planner, uh, we'll or I will take a little bit off because I know that I don't have to do any planning, and that's hours and hours out of mine. So I'll. I'll you know, let let you do that, and you know, sure, I'll take that out of the mm -hmm. um, off yeah. my off our feet. Right. But at the end of the day, you have a budget. Who pays? What's the rule? When we were coming up, it was the the bride's, the bride's family yep. pay. But yeah. I don't know. That's not really a thing anymore. No, is it? that isn't a thing. It, it's fifty fifty. Where I'm finding, in my experience, a lot of couples yep. paying for themselves, um, and the families kind of chipping in where where they want to right. or need to. Um, but that really is a personal decision on who pays, and mm -hmm. and really where the venue where it's being held. Also, if you're having a, a a wedding that's not in your city, a destination wedding, I do find in my experience that whoever like the family that's in that city tend to give a little bit more they're more involved in it um, but there's no there's no there's no rules there's no rule at all about who pays and not even like the rehearsal and all like what we used to do way back in the day um, it doesn't exist anymore good because uh, I have three daughters <laughs> so that's good to hear <laughs> that's good to hear um, you started talking about a wedding planner wedding coordinator but we'll answer the rest of that question when we bring Hannah back because as a venue coordinator here, there, you know, there's the planner, the coordinator, then there's the venue coordinator. And mm -hmm. they all have different roles, yet they all work together. So we'll talk about that in our next, next segment. Um, so where do I start the planning? What's the venue, the planning, other vendors? Um, we kind of answered that already. Yeah, there's two ways you can go at that. Is if a lot we get a lot of people who come, they're engaged. The first thing they do is hire a planner mm -hmm. because they they know that the budget's going to be met, and then we help them kind of slot in all the professionals. Or really important is probably your venue, and like you said, the the the, the more expensive. Right. Um, um, professionals too but the venue for sure and then once you have a place because we're gonna ask you anyways you can't really fill in the blanks without having a spot <laughs> to get married in right. and so going to that the perfect scenario is having your planner come with you to the venue um, to ask those mm -hmm. questions but if not you can come and get a planner after and we call that partial planning okay or a coordinator for the day and we're just there to make the day go smooth okay We'll talk a little bit about budget when we have Hannah back. Okay. Um, but I have a feeling the twenty dollars a plate that we had when I got married is <laughs> you know, that's that's long gone too, right? Um, I would say not even just for venues, but for private properties as well. Right. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit more about budget next. Next question we had was, um, if I have the wedding on my property, do I need a liquor license? And who gets it? Uh, what if I have a bartender? What's, I know that's complicated with the rules in Ontario, so um, yeah. this is Ontario rules, so if you're watching this anywhere else, just be okay. aware we're talking about Ontario. So this is really important um, to know because if you if you call the liquor li the liquor board or LCBO, you'll, you'll, you'll get different answers 
based on how you're handling the liquor. So if you are at a venue, they will likely, they should have a liquor license. Um, most venues do. Some of the outdoor venues, you have to be careful, they might not have their own liquor license and so they ask you to bring your own um, license with you or you can get a special occasions permit or an SOP. Um, the only reason you would get a special occasions permit, um, if it's on private property, you don't technically need one. And so some of you will find when you go to the website to apply for one, you'll get stuck and it's like page seven. Yeah. You will get stuck. I get the call all the time at the shop. I'm on the site right now and won't let me go forward. It's because in Ontario, you don't technically need an SOP for a private property because your insurance writer covers it. Uh, your insurance rider for your like your own house insurance, or do you yes. need special insurance for an event? No, so there is two. So one, you can extend your rider, which will cover everyone being on your property, but it's really highly suggested that you get PAL insurance, so party and liability, and it's it's not very much money. I think it's hundred and forty five dollars or something. It's it's very little. Um, you can get that through your own insurance company? No, you go to pal and pal.com or something. Okay. But I, I can put the link up later. Um, but we highly recommend that. That just covers if anyone gets hurt or on your property, but it doesn't cover your alcohol. So how, going back to that though, the only reason you would get an SOP is if you want to buy all your liquor on the special occasions permit, you can return it after the wedding if it's not used. But if you don't have an SOP, you can't return it. Got it. So it, can, it talk to a planner because mm -hmm. it can get depending on where you are getting married. There's specific rules. So if I have a party, like we saw through COVID, uh, and even last year we had a lot of outdoor weddings in backyards or farm properties. So if I have that on my personal property and I'm not selling, Correct. I don't need an SOP. No. No, and you don't, if you aren't selling the liquor, you don't need a liquor license. That is for people who are selling and making money. Like so at you, a stag and dough. A stag and dough, you would need your own liquor license unless you're holding it at a hall who already has it. But right. likely they won't extend their liquor license to you anyways because you're making the money, not them. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's complicated though. It is. The, be sure to ask somebody who knows about that. Um, you don't want to get caught. They do. I have been many, many weddings over the last few years where the authorities have shown up looking for your paperwork. So as a as a day of coordinator on private properties, I always have the paperwork in a binder. And we they have shown up and we have been able to produce it. Okay. Um, what do you book first? What vendors? Creative professionals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I caught myself. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I don't think there's really any order, but I believe, well, if not, if not a planner, which you don't have to right away, but I would say your venue for sure. Yeah, 100%. Um, I would say photographers and videographers book up very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I would start there. And then the rest, everyone else, like your florists, in my, they, they, they don't need that much time. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say your venue for sure, if it's something you have your heart right. set on. Well, I, I kind of break it down to the people who can only do one wedding in a day. Yes. You know, photographers, videographers. Yeah. You know, I can only do one, so I will book out far in advance. But a florist, maybe a caterer who can do multiple events, it's a little bit... Uh, catering, definitely, and transportation. Oh, um, yeah, those we, uh, little guys are... Yeah. Especially the like the really good reliable ones that get booked up all the time. Um, I would definitely book that early. Okay. All right. Anything else that you want to add before we take a little break? No, I think that was a good start. I'm excited to bring Hannah in. Yes. So right after this little break, we're going to bring Hannah, who is the one of the wedding coordinators here at the Retro Suites. Yes. Okay. We'll be right back. <laughs> And welcome back to Weddings Over Whiskey. This is still my first, but Lori's third, so that's why she's a little bit more giggly than normal. And I'd like to welcome here to the show, Hannah, who's the one of the Hello. wedding coordinators here at Retro Suites. And there's two of you, right? Two of you, two coordinators? Uh, it's just me, uh, but I do have Brittany, who also helps plan some events, but weddings is my specialty. Right on, okay, well, welcome. So what is the difference between 
a wedding coordinator, a venue coordinator, and a wedding planner. If you want to start the difference between wedding planner, coordinator, and then venue coordinator. Because I know there's a lot of overlap, mm -hmm. but I know there's some confusion about who does what. And <laughs> I'd like and to hear what. Hannah's take on this, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and how, if, when a, how a coordinator helps an outsider. Yeah. So as a venue coordinator, I kind of have to just be here. The venue is my bread and butter. All the vendors come in, I've got to help them. Sorry, industry professionals. Yeah, that's good, that's good, I like that. Well. <laughs> I have to help them, get them set up, um, take care of the food, make sure that's running on time, make sure everything in the venue space looks great, your ceremony looks great. Um, and then where a wedding coordinator or a wedding planner comes in handy is they can pick up all the other pieces and sometimes help with those pieces. Um, I've kind of got to be here focusing on this stuff here and so I can't be up with you in your bridal suite or I can't be going with you to take your pictures and bringing those extra things with and those kinds of things. I've kind of just got a restricted to here this building like the venue itself right and the difference between us and we work very well together yeah. because we get to know each other's roles really well is that I start early in the morning like I start when you're waking up and you're getting your flowers delivered or so I'm picking up the flowers or the you know getting the the suits ironed and things like that and just getting them ready before they come to the venue but all in the same time mm -hmm. I'm texting all of your professionals and Hannah doing timelines and making sure that everybody is where they need to be so that when we do come then Hannah takes over and the venue is ready for us so on a, on a any given day something happens and the timeline needs to be shifted or moved along or pulled back and so having someone the one point person for all of your professionals, it's one person they have to deal with. Yeah. Um, so the bride and groom don't hear about anything most of the day. Yeah. I'll, I'll attest to that because I've done a couple weddings with you where a couple things went off the rails and you were able to kind of get that all back together. Nothing serious, nothing major. The bride had no idea, or the couple had no mm -hmm. idea that anything mm -hmm. was, they thought the day was perfect. And when we talked to them after and did our little post-mortem with them, you know, they had no idea. He said, if you only knew how important your wedding coordinator was yeah. that day to keep things, I just call it a little bubble, right? A bubble wrap right. around the couple. Yeah. And I think that all, I don't think people realize, even the clients that we've had together too, yeah. um, how much you and I talk that week yeah. of the wedding. Yeah. How many text messages go back and forth yeah. and how much give and take we both do, right? Can you do this pretty please? Yes. Yeah. And then when, we're, especially when we're in as decorators also, it's just really nice having that close relationship. And I think some of my clients have said, we're so happy when Hannah says, oh, we know Lori. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the pieces put, fall together. Yeah. And I think even as an industry professional, to hear a familiar name is coming in to like my venue, it's like, okay, great, I know their expectations, I know exactly what they need, I know when to reach out to them, when's a good time. It just takes so much stress or mm -hmm. confusion off the plates. It's like, Laura's coming in, that's great, I know exactly what the day's going to be like. I can trust her, she's a, she's a good friend and a trusted <laughs> industry professional, so it's just great. And I think that the bride and grooms can feel that throughout the day yes. when they know that everyone is working together for the betterment of their day to make sure they have the best day. Absolutely. It's so important that your professionals can actually do the job they were hired to do, mm -hmm. right? And so, so often um, our, our, our roles get stretched a little when there's someone missing out of the equation. Yeah. And I hope as a coordinator for the day, because um, most people realize after the day is done how important it is, um, and, and you, because you and I are, we're here till one o'clock in the morning, um, but they realize after how, how much happens, right? And so the photographer is not the one doing the timeline, keeping it going. You can just focus on right. what you do best. And that's why I like working with both of you. <laughs> Yes, yeah. and, and everything we're talking about. I mean, we're talking about relationships that we all have, the three of us. But it, but it's any wedding planner, any venue, yes. any photographer, videographer, anybody who's a professional and takes their job seriously. It, we all work together well. Like, you're, I'm not the only photographer you work with, mm -hmm. although I'm sure I'm your favorite. But I, I, you know, I'm not the only photographer who's been in here. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've been in other venues, so it's just people being professional. Absolutely. Talk about budgets and how much things can cost 
and you don't have to be Hannah like you don't have to be specific about this venue you can talk general you can talk whatever but let's just I just got engaged how much is a wedding here gonna cost me yeah it kind of depends on what you're looking for and that's kind of what the retro suites is all about is being accessible so if you want that big luxurious wedding here that's great that's something that we can do but if you want something small or intimate we have smaller spaces that can accommodate you we really just want to work with the couple to do whatever's going to be best for them, whatever's going to work with their budget. Um, we're open with what our costs are, but we're also open to you sharing your budget with us so that we can work within it. No menu is set in stone. If there's something you don't want on the menu, we'll take it off and give you a revised price of what it looks like without it on. If you're flexible, we'll do discounts on Fridays and Sundays. And January, February, March, we'll do half off the room rental. Um, we offer a lot of great things. You just have to kind of be open to it and flexible and ask. Um, but we're more than happy to work with anyone's budget to make whatever mm -hmm. their day looks like perfect. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, it's funny. People always ask me, who's your ideal client, right? And for me, it's not how much does it cost to photograph your wedding? Because I could give them a price list just like you could, right? Yeah. But there's so many different variables. There's the time of year. It's do I want to shoot at this place? So it's not always about price, right? It's about everything else. Who am I working with? It's it's there's so many other things, not just price, 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 price. So yeah. don't don't always be comparing price because as you said earlier, mm -hmm. you do get what you pay for. It is you only get one shot at this right yeah. yeah and I always ask what kind of experience do you want because you can have the same experience at different budget points and so when I when I hear that then I can go to Hannah and say and I, we often have this conversation this is what she's dreaming of this is what she thinks it's going to look like and then we do everything we can to make that happen yeah mm -hmm. yeah you mentioned luxury mm-hmm we're yeah. going to talk to John about <laughs> what does a luxury wedding mean, and then we'll come back yeah, to it's funny. pricing. It's not what you think it is. Most people think luxury is expensive, mm -hmm. and it's all about experience. And did the your wedding pros provide you a luxury experience? And luxury does not mean expensive. It's personalized, and it's yes. exactly what you said. It's like, yes, we will work with your budget. We will take this out. We will give you the experience that you want, not just picking things off a price list, right? It's customizing it, it's giving you a bespoke experience. Yep. Yes, right? and you and I have, and we've done tiny weddings here, and we've done a few tiny weddings here where it's 20 people or less, and we've been able to give them exactly what they asked for, and mm -hmm. that was luxury, just you know the type of florals we used, or the plates, or the right. dinner that, we, that you served. Um, so luxury means that everything comes together and looks cohesive. And it's not just thrown together pieces. Yeah, it's that experience, it's that feeling that your couple has after the wedding where they feel like they were the most important person yes. in your life at that moment. Yes. And, I, and I try to do that. Agreed, uh, yeah. I think we all do, right? Yeah. And that's the great thing about, um, you know, as, as small business professionals, that when I get an inquiry, like, it's like, oh my God, right? <laughs> it's like you're not just picking up something off a shelf, right? I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I tell my family, oh, I've got this inquiry for this really cool venue. And it, gets, it becomes everything I am for those few days that that, mm -hmm. you know, that that inquiry is happening, right? So that person, whoever is, you know, inquiring about that date is getting my full heart and soul. That is part of that luxury experience. I'm not just firing you off a price list and say, oh, it's like five grand or 10 grand or whatever it is. That to me is just, yeah, there's nothing special about that. And I will work with you to come up with a, with a budget, just yeah. like you guys will, right? Yeah. And to me, that's luxury. Absolutely. So um, when should we, if I want my wedding here, how far out should, should we be talking? Um, I would say a year in advance, mm -hmm. um, and even 2025 is now becoming quite full. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely say a year in advance is pretty standard, pretty decent for a wedding venue. Okay. Um, yeah, in the busier months, you're probably going to want to do a year and a half in advance mm -hmm. if you can, if you have that. Um, some few dates will be still available, but you can't be as selective about the date. You kind of have to be flexible, but I would definitely say like at least a year before. Can we talk about the engagement gap? Yes. Yes, we talked about it uh, at length. Yes, um, we do. And this is just, if you talk to anybody in the wedding business, certainly COVID hurt 
everybody in the business, right? Um, but we had this great resurgence in 23 and 20, right? 22 and 23. 22. So yeah, 22 and 23, just crazy years. But then it got a little quieter because during COVID, nobody was dating, nobody was meeting, and nobody had that three-year dating, really, that average three years, right? So now here we are, like nobody's, date, no, nobody's dated, right. you know, for that three-year courtship. Right. So we're finding it's a little bit slower. So I'm booking up a little bit, tight, a tighter window than I'm used to. Yes. Do you find that as well? Yes, and I was just I was just at an event this weekend in, in London, and so the some of the professionals there were experiencing the exact same thing. Right. So it's everywhere. They're just they're getting calls, and the, and the timeline is like six months from now, and right. So um, we're definitely feeling it, but excited to to meet you and have you. But the sooner you can find out, the right. better. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so if somebody in February, like seven or eight years ago, if if you called me in February and wanted an August wedding, I would. You couldn't couldn't do it. Yeah. But now, most people are like, yeah, I could probably, probably swing that. Yeah. And I like your point about being flexible, too, because I know we've had the privilege of being here on days other than Saturdays. Yeah. So let's talk about maybe those options that people don't realize. Yeah. Um, I feel like 2024 is a good one where people are more opening up to the idea of Fridays and Sunday weddings. Um, as long as you're flexible, a Friday wedding is just the same as having it on Saturday, just a day before. And then your guests get an extra day to recover from <laughs> from the wedding. So that's always nice. Um, we get a lot of Sunday weddings on holiday weekends when most people will have the Mondays off, which is also nice. And you get a pretty good discount for having it a different day. And you get the exact same wedding just on a different day, not on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love Friday good. weddings myself. Yeah, I, me too. I really do. <laughs> I really love Friday, especially in the summer, like you get that sunset wedding. Oh, yeah. oh give me all the Friday weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, anything else to add about planning? Okay, so to all you that are that are recently engaged or about to be engaged, uh, congratulations, we're really happy for you. Um, set that budget, that's number one, set your budget. Talk to your big vendors early. And big doesn't always have to mean photographer, planner, venue, caterer, it's whatever's big to you. That's right. Whatever the most important thing is to you. Um, what else? Give me one more. Give me one more take key takeaway. Um, I I think you need to write things down. Right. I'm That's a, it. I'm a big I'm a big believer, and if you if you write it down, it'll happen, and it gives you a clear idea. And have a checklist. So um, as you're checking things off, so you're not forgetting. Um, just having it all in your head, mm -hmm. which I know a lot of couples are really a lot of brides, <laughs> and some of my grooms are are just they, it's, it's all in my head. It's all up there. Um, that's a lot to keep up there. Mm -hmm. You need to yeah. share your information. So share it with people. Otherwise, it can be very stressful. I think just three couples this week alone just telling me how stressed they are already, and they only just started. Yeah. So we don't want weddings aren't stressful. They're just yeah. they're just busy, right? right? There's a lot of elements to it, but yeah. they should not be stressful at all. Right. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us on our episode of Weddings Over Whiskey. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers everybody and we'll see you Cheers. later. Happy planning. Okay.